Hi, I'm here with FCC's Chief Agricultural Economist, J.P. Gervais, and we're here to talk about today the latest report released by FCC, the 2015 edition of A Look at Global Trade. And we'll also talk about the impact it has on Canadian farmers and agribusiness and agri-food operators. So, J.P., what is this report all about? Well, this is a report that we put together on an annual basis, and it looks at Canada's competitiveness or competitive position in world markets when it comes to trade of agricultural commodities and food products. Every year also we try to put a special emphasis on a, on a specific topic and this year we thought exchange rates would be uh, interesting. Uh, we know the Canadian dollar right now is at one of its lowest points in so many years. There's a lot of turbulence in the world economy right now that's affecting a lot of the different currency values around the world. And so we thought it would be really relevant to look at the impact of currency movements on trade flows, especially focusing on Canadian exports of, of agricultural commodities and food products. What are the main findings in this particular report? We're the fifth largest exporting country in the world when it comes to agriculture and agri-food products. Something often overlooked is also the fact that we're a large importing country and are ranked number six in the world. Uh, and, and there are multiple sectors which represent Canada's weight in export markets. For example, we're the third largest exporting country for pork and wheat and the fourth largest exporter of oil seeds. And we're also a major exporter of beef, oil seeds, special crops uh, such as beans, uh, peas, lentils. What is most interesting is also when you look at global trade in relation to the size of the different countries and how much they produce. Many countries can produce and export a lot of agricultural products just because of their sheer size. But as I mentioned, we're the fifth largest exporter in the world, but we even, we even rank higher when we're looking at the value of trade on a per capita basis. So in relative terms, Canada actually steps past the other major traders and is the top trader in the world on a per capita basis. Let's talk a little bit about exchange rates. What are their impacts on Canadian exports? Well, conventional wisdom suggests a lower valued currency is good for exports. In other words, as our currency value drops, the value of our exports goes up. And we find this to be true to some extent. You know, for some sectors and destinations, uh, the value of the Canadian dollar against the value of the other uh, importing countries' currency is not the main determinant of trade flows. And, and this is important to understand because you don't really want to build a competitive position based simply on the value of exchange rates. Um, and then perhaps I should also start by explaining what I mean by conventional wisdom. When the value of the loonie declines, and the loonie being our, our Canadian dollar, when it declines relative to the US dollar, it lowers the cost of our exports to the US. That's because the same number of US dollars can now be used to buy a greater number of Canadian products. In theory, more US buyers should step in as our exports become cheaper relative to other similar products. Uh, and this should also lead to increased sales in the US market. We also need to realize that it takes time for, for Canadian exporters to increase sales in other markets. You need to find buyers, sign contracts, and so on. On the other hand, if our dollar gets stronger relative to the US dollar, our exports will cost more for U.S. Buy buyers and, and it leads to lower exports. A couple of important points to remember are that each export market is at its own currency. Our exports to Japan are in part uh, a result of the value of the Canadian dollar relative to the Japanese yen. But a lot of the products that we export to Japan are priced in U.S. dollars. And so you need to bring in a third currency. It's not just the, the value of the Canadian dollar relative to the Japanese yen, but it's also the value of the Canadian dollar relative to the US dollar and the value of the US dollar relative to the currency in Japan. So there's a lot of different factors that you need to account for when you try to evaluate the impact of, of the Canadian dollar or the value of the Canadian dollar on our exports to different destinations. You mentioned some differences in the impacts of exchange rates depending on sectors and countries. Could you give us some examples? Absolutely. Let's think of food manufacturing first. Exchange rates matter when it comes to our exports of food products. When we investigated the issue and found that over time, a lower Canadian dollar against the currency value of the US, Mexico or Japan increases our exports of agri-food products to these destinations. It's not, it's not a surprise really. A more competitive position yields more sales. We also found that the adjustment is almost right away when it comes to our exports to the U.S. market. And that makes a lot of sense. We export, 71% um, of our exports of food products actually go to the United States and we have a very well established relationship with the U.S. market. It's a little bit different when you look at our exports to Mexico and Japan. It takes a little bit more time to establish that, that competitive position when our, the value of our currency comes down. 
Uh, Canadian dollar doesn't seem to have as much impact on Canadian agri-food exports to other destinations like China and, and Europe. Um, perhaps because, you know, if you look at our exports to the European market, it's, it, there's a lot of, of high-value exports that go to this market. And so uh, consumers there have different concerns over quality that may not be captured by, by looking at aggregate data like we did. Uh, and in the case of China, well, maybe Chinese imports of food products are not that sensitive to movements in currency value. They're more responsive, perhaps, to the growth and income that we've seen over the last, uh, the last few years in China. What about commodities like crops or livestock? Does the value of the Canadian dollar affect Canada's performance when it comes to trade? Well, Canada is the world's largest exporter of livestock. Almost all of our Canadian exports of livestock go to the United States. So it's not entirely surprising that when the value of the Canadian dollar goes down, we see the value of our Canadian exports of livestock go up. Uh, it's a little bit different when it comes to crops. When you think of crops, it involves a really diversified set of, of commodities. You're thinking of wheat, canola, fruits and vegetables, uh, special crops. And when it comes to our exports of crops as well, we're a lot more diversified. About 25% only of Canadian crop exports goes to the United States. And yes, when the value of the Canadian dollar goes down, we see the value of Canadian crops uh, exports go up. Uh, mostly because these commodities are often, if not always, priced in U.S. dollars. But over the long term, when we look at three months, six months, nine months, and a year down the road, we really don't find a, really, a significant impact in relation to the lower Canadian dollar. So in other words, yes, short term, we'll see the value of Canadian exports of crops go up when the Canadian dollar loses value against the U.S. dollars. But over the long term, because our exports are so diversified, we really don't see any significant impact. The bottom line is that there are other factors that impact the competitiveness of Canadian crop exports in the world market. 